Welcome to English Grammar Sport. This lesson is about the gerund and the infinitive. In this lesson, I'm going to show you what a gerund is, when to use a gerund, what an infinitive is, and when to use an infinitive. Now, there's not a very uh, case of either you use a gerund or you use an infinitive. The gerund and the infinitive are simply grammatical tools which we use to construct a sentence. So it's not a difference as in say, oh, here you use a past simple and there you use a per present perfect. Now take a look at these sentences. Sailing around the world is an adventure. I can't afford to go on holiday this year. In the first sentence, sailing is what we call a gerund. In the second sentence, to go is what we call an infinitive. Now, what is a gerund? A gerund is a verb to which ing is added. The gerund looks like a verb, but it is used as a noun. Moreover, it looks often like a continuous tense, but it is used differently. For example, eating a class is not allowed. Eating here is a gerund. Why? Because it's the subject of a sentence. It is a noun here. Whereas he was eating in class is a past continuous, because here it's used as a tense. Now when do we use a gerund? First and foremost, we use the gerund often as a verbal noun. So, a noun that looks like a verb. For example, smoking in public areas should be banned. So we have the verb to smoke, we've added ing, so we've made it into a noun, and it takes the position of the subject here. He quit smoking cigars when he was 25. Again, we've taken the verb to smoke, added ing, making it a noun, and then put it in the place of the object. So here it has become a noun. We also use the gerund after certain verbs. So these are not all the verbs, but those are these are the most common ones. To admit, to avoid, to consider, to deny, to enjoy, to finish, to involve, to keep, to mean, to practice, to quit, to remember, to stop, to understand and to waste. So, for instance, I have to admit going to the cinema is um, very nice, for instance. We also use the gerund after prepositions. Besides swimming, we didn't do much, so besides here is a preposition. Or, I'm thinking of quitting my job. Again, of is a preposition, so it is preceded by a gerund. He looked at her without saying a word, and again, without is a preposition. Now, what is an infinitive? The verb itself is an infinitive, and it can be preceded by two, so here we call it then a two infinitive, or simply the verb itself, and that is the general infinitive. For example, to be honest, I love learning English, so to be is the two infinitive. I would rather help my mother, here help is the infinitive. Go and check if I've left the oven on. Go and check are both infinitives. Now, when do we use the to infinitive? Certain verbs take the to infinitive. For example, these verbs are to appear, to arrange, to bother, to choose, to decide, to feel, to hope, to learn, to manage, to offer, to plan, to refuse, to seem, to tend, to volunteer, to wish. So these are the most common ones. These are not all. So um, I appear to have lost my keys, for example. So to appear and to have for then is the to infinitive. We also use the to infinitive after adjectives. It was difficult to see through the fog. So here, difficult is an adjective. She's happy to help us. Again, happy as an adjective takes the to infinitive. And it is easy to bake a cake. When to use a regular infinitive? After modals, we use the infinitive. Can, could, will, would, shall, may, might, must and should are the modals. And these are generally preceded by the infinitive. So, um, for instance, I might wonder where my keys are. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, people tend to uh, be um, sort of troubled by the gerund in the infinitive in thinking that you either use the gerund or the infinitive um, and there are strict rules to that. 
Um, it is more complicated than that, but generally we can say that the gerund is used for things that have already happened. For example, he began playing baseball last year, as opposed uh, to the infinitive, which is used for things that can or still happen. So um, it is still possible to win, or he will begin to play baseball next month, for instance. So that's generally the difference then between the two. Um, and many verbs can be preceded by both the gerund and the infinitive. For example, to allow, to begin, to continue, to forget, to hate, to love, to intend, to like, to mean, to need, to prefer, to remember, to start, to stop, to try, to want. So um, it is a tricky thing, the gerund and the infinitive, but um, luckily um, in most cases it doesn't really matter um, which you use, only if you um, are careful enough to apply the rules that I've just uh, talked to you about. So, um, well, the best... What do you think she's thinking? I love shopping. Shopping is an example of a gerund. Gerunds take the form of verb plus ing. They act as nouns or pronouns. We usually use them for likes and dislikes. For example, I love shopping. For general activities, I'm good at dancing. For abstract ideas, I'm not used to working late. When there is no noun to describe something, catching the train during peak hour is really annoying. When ideas are in incomplete sentences, what are your hobbies? watching TV and surfing the internet. Let's compare gerunds and infinitives. Use the gerund as the subject of a sentence. Flying makes me nervous. As the object of a sentence. I find listening to music very relaxing. After prepositions. The police arrested her for speeding. After phrasal verbs. She ended up going to prison. After certain verbs such as admit, avoid, can't help, carry on, consider, deny, finish, give up, imagine, involve, keep on, miss, postpone, practice, risk, spend, stop, suggest. For example, you should avoid taking a stroll outside during a hurricane. After words for expressing like and dislike, can't stand, crazy about, enjoy, fancy, hate, like and dislike, keen on, love, don't mind, prefer. I love skydiving. Use the infinitive with to to express a reason or purpose. He ran to avoid being caught. After adjectives, this safe is easy to open. After certain verbs including can or can't afford, agree, appear, be able to, can't wait, decide, expect, forget, happen, have or have got, help, hope, learn, manage, need, offer, plan, pretend, promise, refuse, remember, seem, teach, tend, threaten, try, want, would like. For example, he threatened to hurt the man. Infinitives are not generally used as the subject of sentences. Use the infinitive without to after modals. You should see a doctor. Auxiliary verbs. We'll go swimming tomorrow. Let, make and help. Let's go shopping. Help me carry my shoes. Sometimes she makes me want to scream. Gerunds and infinitives form the negative with not. For example, I don't like shopping. I don't want to go shopping. I won't go shopping. These verbs can be followed with either the gerund or infinitive with to, with no difference in meaning. Begin, continue, prefer and start. I prefer doing yoga. I prefer to do yoga. These verbs can be followed with either the gerund or infinitive with to, but the meaning is different. 
Try, remember, forget, and need. For example, try not to hurt yourself again. This means make an effort to do something. You should try going to an Italian restaurant. This means try something to see if you like it. Remember to fasten your seatbelt. This means don't forget something. I remember seeing you in high school. This means having a memory of something. I forgot to bring my luggage. This means you didn't remember something. I'll never forget seeing the beautiful scenery. This means you did something and you won't forget it. It's more common in the negative form. You need to buy a new car. This means you must do something. The car needs repairing. This means the subject requires something.